Uh, today's world is so enormous and so complex. There are so many factors involved that is, uh, in our everyday experience that the whole idea of a single unified image is impossible to contemplate. So Laura's work is really in sync with uh, a very different approach to that, which is more related to the contemporary times, uh, which doesn't seek um, a unified single image, but instead tries to sort of bring together a set of marks that create a dissonance or a disharmony, um, even though it still holds together. And one has to uh, approach the work um, as a result um, by almost a kind of reading. These paintings demand that you read them. Uh, they're not narrative. Um, they're much more lyrical, um, closer to poetry. Um, the way that the marks um, are made require that you compare them and so there's a kind of movement of the eye that's produced that uh, requires that you really pursue them as events and rather than as narratives. So one of the musicians that comes to mind in thinking about is the work of Schoenberg, especially the, the, uh, in relationship to the paintings that are more violent. There's a real cacophony um, and a dissonance um, in those works, similarly to the dissonance that you'll find in Schoenberg's work. One has to, for me, when I look at them, I have to shift scales. Um, there's a macro scale, there's a micro scale. Um, and then there is this thing that I keep going back to, which is the velocity uh, of the marks. And then I stop looking at them, and then I start gauging them according to their temporality. You know, then I look, at both, I, I look at them for their spatial depths or their spatial layers, um, but then I have to go back and really look at the, uh, the temporality of how the marks were put down. And it's that tension that I think that is really compelling for me. Uh, very compelling for me. And then I do feel sometimes torn apart, sometimes engaged, sometimes in falling, sometimes um, in you know, complete free, uh, free fall. Uh, there are different states, but I keep coming back to agitation, right? mm -hmm. not being able to stay still in any one place. that are produced in us by the paintings themselves, so that they're objective in that sense. One has to look at the marks as events um, and not simply as representation of images of a world out there that we're used to seeing. We can also compare these works to some of the theories behind Brecht's work or even Artaud's work, which is to sort of move away from um, psychological internal states and more towards, you know, the aura, the general aura of a work or what uh, Artaud would call the hieroglyph, all the different components of the work coming together um, in order to produce an overall effect um, on the viewer rather than to uh, draw an emotional state out of the viewer. So in that way, um, these works are emotionally objective. They're, they always are somewhat impossible. 